Well, ladies and gentlemen, here we are. 2018 is officially over. Throughout this past year, I watched 263 films, 120 of which were movies ranging from the 1920s to 2017, and the remaining 143 movies were new releases, which is precisely what we will be discussing today. And out of those 143 films, I have handpicked 20 of them that I have deemed to be my favorite movies that I saw this year. I would say it's important to keep in mind that this list is not based purely on quality alone. A lot of these movies are listed where they are because of how much I enjoyed them personally. In addition to that, if you disagree with my list, that's great. In fact, it would be really weird if we had the exact same list. So instead of getting really angry and typing a lot of hateful things in the comments, why don't you leave a list of your favorite films of the year or movies that you thought touched you on a personal level? I would love to read them. But before we get started, I wanted to shout out five films that I did thoroughly enjoy, but didn't just quite make the cut of my favorite movies of the year. So for this year's honorable mentions, ranging from least to greatest, we have Can You Ever Forgive Me, Searching, Roma, Bad Times at the El Royale, and First Reformed. So with those out of the way, and without further ado, I present my favorite films of 2018. Seeing that this is Boots Riley's directorial debut, Sorry to Bother You impressed the hell out of me. This is a wildly original film that, for better or worse, has a lot to say about today's socio-political climate, ranging from everything from the wage gap to meme culture and pretty much everything in between. This film also features two wonderful performances from Lakeith Stanfield as well as Tessa Thompson, who all contribute to bring Boots Riley's very unique and singular vision to life. I think he's a filmmaker that has tremendous potential and somebody that if he continues to fine tune his skills, he could be one of the most unique directors working in Hollywood today. Easily one of Spike Lee's more accessible films in recent memory, Black Klansman is a brilliantly told story that definitely is able to transition between its more comedic moments to its starkly serious moments. In addition to that, Black Klansman is a film that is able to not only include Spike Lee's very noticeable influences into this film, but also include some other well-known exploitation movies, all of which result in a movie that feels incredibly relevant and in incredibly important to the year that it was released. A pretty late addition to this list, in fact I just watched it under a week ago, but Madeline's Madeline is one of the more striking films that I've seen this year. A movie that examines the relationship between an artist and the art that they create. This film also serves as this very self-reflective piece that really blindsided me with how powerful it can be in parts. The lead of this film, Helena Howard, is without a doubt one of the best performances that I've seen this year. Unfortunately, I'm not really sure how much buzz is circling her name around award season so do yourself a favor and go seek out this film you will not want to miss this one The fact that the best film in this franchise is its sixth installment is pretty ridiculous, especially considering how long this series has been going. But somehow with Mission Impossible Fallout, they did it. There are some truly jaw-dropping moments in this film that are brilliantly helmed by Christopher McQuarrie, who, in all honesty, is doing things in Hollywood that not a lot of other directors are doing. This movie also features some of the best car chases that I think I've ever seen put to film. And as long as Tom Cruise is willing to throw himself out of a plane or a helicopter, or a building, it seems that we're going to continue to get more of these movies, which, if they're as good as this, is fine by me. Yet another directorial debut making its way onto this list, Thoroughbreds is a fantastic thriller, and also this brilliant character study between these two friends re-establishing a broken relationship. This film also has one of the most powerful and memorable endings of any movie that I saw this year, and also features two excellent performances from its two leads. And if you enjoy films like Heathers or even American Psycho, I strongly recommend that you seek out this film as well. 
Although this is not the only Netflix original to make its way onto this list, this is the only documentary to make it into my top 20, and for good reason. Shirkers is a wonderful film that in its essence captures a lot of the themes that I feel have been present throughout 2018. For those of you who don't know, this film follows the production of a Singaporean independent film and the repercussions that one of the workers on this film have on the overall outcome of this movie. This is a truly fascinating documentary that not only focuses on the overall ins and out of the production of this film, but how it impacted those who created it. Another Netflix original to make its way onto my list, Tamara Jenkins tells one of the more intimate and human stories that I've seen this year with Private Life, a story about a couple who is struggling to have a child. I found this film, even with its small scale, to be incredibly impactful. And a large part of that is due because of this film's two leads, being portrayed by Paul Giamatti and Katherine Hahn, who both respectively give career-high performances. This film takes its time to highlight a lot of elements of adult life that I feel aren't really that often covered in a lot of contemporary films. This movie is funny, it's also so touching, and very quietly emotional, and if you haven't done so, I strongly recommend that you seek out this film. As I said, it is on Netflix. Without a doubt, the most powerful film that I had the pleasure of watching this year. The tale takes the first-hand experiences of its writer and director Jennifer Fox and is able to craft such an emotional story behind it. This film tells its story in such a way that I feel is only truly able to be accomplished if it is done by someone who lived it. This film is also bolstered by a wonderful performance from Laura Dern, whose work in this film is not something that I will soon forget. This film is not an easy watch but it is an important one. So if you have the means to do so, I strongly recommend that you seek out this film. Definitely one of the highlights of the summer, American Animals delivers one of the most unconventional heist films that I've seen in years. I love the idea of this film incorporating these interviews with the people who actually carried out this act throughout the film. All the while, this film manages to cover some pretty hefty themes while simultaneously delivering on a gripping crime thriller. Specifically, the heist sequence in this film, which is one of the most riveting scenes that I saw in the theater this year. Easily one of the most surprising films that I saw this year, Lynn Ramsey's You Were Never Really Here stands tall as this unique tale of violence and redemption. It should be expected that a Lynn Ramsey version of Taken of sorts would be something this existential. Unlike the weapon of choice in this film being a ball peen hammer, the direction of this movie has more in line with a scalpel with how intentionally this film is crafted. And when this movie was over, I immediately wanted to restart it so I could pick apart every single frame of this film. Kicking off my top 10, we have the newest film from Yorgos Lanthimos, a director whose vision can be clearly seen even in a movie that he did not write, such as The Favorite. He's still able to weave throughout this film his wicked sense of humor and his very recognizable visual style. I also felt that this film is the best acted movie in his filmography, featuring three Oscar-worthy performances from Rachel Wise, Emma Stone, and especially Olivia Colman. This film serves as a really fascinating an examination of abuse and coping mechanisms and how they affect the relationships within this film. I loved seeing the journey that these characters go on and I cannot wait to watch this movie again. The first of a few A24 movies on this list, Mid-90s proves to be a winning debut from Jonah Hill. This film serves as an honest depiction of this lifestyle and this culture and this era. A24, time and time again, has continued to produce exceptional coming-of-age films, and Mid-90s is no exception. This is a film that has been very clearly made with a lot of heart and a lot of soul behind it. It features excellent performances and is able to delve into some themes that I thought were pretty gutsy for a movie to come out in this day and age. I'm very interested to see what Jonah Hill does next, and I hope that we get to see his follow-up to this film very soon. 
without a doubt the most original film that I've seen this year, Border is a Swedish movie that absolutely blindsided me with how much I loved this film. I went and saw this movie on a whim, nowhere near expecting this film to be as bonkers as it is. But more importantly, this film is excellently well told. This film features some of the best special effects makeup of any movie that I've seen this year, and if this film does not receive an Oscar nomination, I'm going to be very upset. In addition to that, the fearlessness from the lead actress, Eva Melander, should absolutely be applauded. She was terrific. If you like strange films in the vein of something like Under the Skin, then I recommend you seek out this film. Don't look up anything about it, just watch it. You can thank me later. 2018 was a big year for Spider-Man fans, and Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse proved to be one of the more satisfying films that I had the pleasure of watching this year. There was a lot of people who were so surprised at how good this movie was, and I can't quite figure out why. But at least the people are giving this film the support that it does deserve. This film is touching, it's brilliantly animated, it is hilarious, and it has such a fun and inventive take on these characters that not only means so much to me, but so many others. Directed by one of my favorite stand-up comedians working today, 8th Grade proved to be a very charming and relatable film about just fitting in. Elsie Fisher was absolutely exceptional in this film, and I'm so glad that audiences are connecting and relating with this film. This film covers such universal themes that a lot of people are able to relate with, like social anxiety, self-consciousness, that whether you're an adult or an 8th grader, you're probably going to experience some time in your life. The collaboration between Fisher and Burnham impactful and insightful screenplay proves to be a film that is just so incredibly sweet. Alright, we finally made it to my top five, and to kick off this section of the list, we have another Netflix original with The Kindergarten Teacher. I had no idea what this film was about going into it, and I'm so incredibly glad that I didn't. This film is fascinating the way that it examines these artistic influences that are portrayed throughout this film, and almost at times comes off as this quiet thriller. Maggie Gyllenhaal is terrific in this movie, and as I said, this is a Netflix original, so if you haven't done so yet, I highly implore you to seek out this film. I was a big fan of Alex Garland's previous work, Ex Machina, so I was thrilled to see his follow-up to that film be even more daring and even more ambitious. I was pretty disappointed to see the box office numbers that Annihilation accumulated because this is probably one of the stronger science fiction films that I've seen this decade. This film features an incredible ensemble cast, inspired special effects, and some truly spine-tingling moments throughout it. An actor that I respect a hell of a lot, Paul Dano's Wildlife was an absolute gut punch of a film. This film has a really brilliant way of looking at the nuclear family of this era and how a simple disruption of this formula can affect the children involved. Carrie Mulligan is another actress who gives a terrific performance in this film. I would love to see her get an Oscar nomination for her work. This film also has so many quiet and subtle moments that are just begging to be analyzed. The opening and closing shot of this film, I could just go on and on about. This is such a heartbreaking film that examines the role that parents play in the development of their children. I absolutely adored this movie. A movie that I had been looking forward to for years had finally arrived, and it did not disappoint. Avengers Infinity War was such a wild ride. I have rewatched this film time and time again, and each time I do so, I enjoy it a little bit more than the last. There are so many moments throughout this film that as someone who has been a fan of these movies since 2008, I just found completely satisfying. I cannot wait to see what the Russos do with Avengers Endgame, but if it is anything like this, I think we are in for a real treat. Whew, all right, we've made it. Now, there were a lot of great movies this year, but there was just one film that ever since leaving the theater, I have not been able to shake from my mind. So my favorite film of 2018 is... 
director Ari Aster was able to accomplish something with this movie that I don't think is done very often, for at least myself. Watching this film, as someone who sees dozens of horror movies a year, I think Ari Aster was able to incite a feeling into me that I really haven't felt before, especially not in the movie theater. I found this film to be so deeply upsetting that even months later and several repeat viewings later, there are some elements and some scenes in this film that still make my skin crawl. I've seen this movie about five or six times now, and each time I do so, I pick up something new along the way. There's not a single shot, not a line of dialogue, not a frame of this movie that is unintentional. And as someone who absolutely devours horror movies, Oh God, I love it so much. Additionally, Toni Collette gives my favorite performance of the year, and if she doesn't at least earn an Oscar nomination, I'm probably gonna have a nervous breakdown. Hereditary is truly one of the best horror movies that I think I've ever seen, and I don't really care what Ari Aster is doing next. I don't care if it's a movie about a box of Cheerios. I will be there, opening night, guaranteed no questions asked. All right, guys, that does it for me in 2018. And I just want to say a massive thank you from the bottom of my heart to each and every one of you who continues to show support for my channel and my videos that I make. Since the beginning of 2018, I have gained over 1200 subscribers and truly, I am so grateful to each and every one of you who continue to watch these videos and give your support. It means so much to me, truly. Thank you so much. I also want to address something that I've seen a lot of people in the film community discuss, and I wanted to give my thoughts on it as well. I will not be doing a worst movies of 2018 list. We live in a pretty negative world, and I just don't really see any sense in piling onto that. With that being said, if you are dying to know what I thought was the worst movie of this year, you can click on the link down below, and you can go to my letterboxed profile, and you can see what I have ranked each movie that I saw this year, ranging from best to to worst. Also, last bit of cleanup before I close this video, I also will not be doing a Blu-ray collection video because throughout this year I've probably only bought maybe 20 to 30 movies and I just don't really see any point in going through the hours and hours and hours of effort that those videos take to make. I really don't care. I hope you guys really don't care, but those videos just aren't that fun for me. So that pretty much does it over here for me and 2018. So thank you guys for watching today. I hope you liked today's video and if you did, you can click on the link down below and subscribe to my channel to see more movie reviews and movie related things. And guys, thank you so much for watching and see you next time.